the session session is the sessions the second session is about the value addition and application of the lighty.atmia hope most of the people uh, know about atmia and uh, this is just a science what uh, how people are working in uh, atmia and uh, i am uh, also going to tell how we can use it for an uh, value addition of things that means how we are going and uh, working on encapsulation and what we are doing in satyamama uh, all these things i am going to narrate in the subsequent slides so we all know artemia uh, artemia is a small crustacean living in saline water in any salt water we can see artemia uh, even in wild popular uh, wild uh, uh, environment uh, such as uh, wild pop as a wild population environment such as salt pan or any kind of high saline water in inundated water <coughs> it is a zooplankton so uh, it is very it is very small in size and visible to our naked eyes so without a microscope we can see the artemia it is also called as the live feed uh, and some people they used to call as brine shrimp and some of the people uh, even they used to name it as sea monkey and in a very different vernacular names also uh, even in tamil they used to call it as puchi so uh, uh, this is the uh, uh, names of artemia Uh, it is also known for its uh, toxicity research model actually artemia is the best toxicity research animal model uh, to fix the lethal dose particularly to fix the ld50 concentration uh, even uh, uh, all kind of american standard uh, all are recommending artemia as the uh, best model and uh, the, the particular uh, kind of uh, assay can be even they used to term it as brain shrimp lethality assay it is also known as a veterinary uh, aquatic veterinary research vector okay because if, if uh, some of the veterinarian those who want to work on aquaculture animal and they want to uh, uh, deliver some of the drugs or any kind of own compounds to any shrimp for uh, any kind of uh, fishes or any uh, 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 culturally important animal Uh, they are using artemia as a vector by the enrichment uh, protocol uh, and artemia is known well known for those who have, who are all having a hobby of ornamental fish uh, and keeping an aquarium in their home because these ornamental fishes are very fond of eating this artemia and artemia cyst that can be easily Uh, 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 used to bring the artemia naplay in home itself, but we are going to uh, see in the subsequent. So it is uh, known as a feed for ornamental fishes at a home aquarium and for edible fishes in aquaculture industry. So before uh, telling about the life cycle of, a, of any aquatic organism, I am just giving an example of a human life cycle in this slide. Uh, as a human, uh, we know an adult male and female. Uh, they they undergo a copulation. Uh, they uh, uh, fertilized egg uh, is developed to a baby, and the baby becomes a child. A child becomes an adolescent. Then adolescent becomes an uh, adult. This cycle will be uh, goes on. And uh, during the cycle, particularly uh, uh, when the baby uh, the uh, fetus in the womb it will use the energy from the uh, mother's body that is uh, the uh, the entire nutrient needed by this uh, uh, fetus will be provided by the womb and when the baby born as a infant uh, its mouth part uh, the mouth cavity is very small and uh, there is no uh, proper development of teeth and all uh, so it cannot chew any food and it is uh, only uh, uh, ready to take the mother's milk so the entire thing will be supplied by the the, the 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 needed energy will be supplied by the mother's milk so because of the small part of the infant as it is not having a proper developed uh, mouth cavity as well as the digestive system it need a special food called mother's milk so then it is developed to a toddler Toddler. In this toddler, there are a deep formation will be there, and the uh, uh, child uh, started uh, try to chew the food. So chew the food, but it cannot chew any kind of rice at all. So 
some kind of special uh, mix of uh, powder will be given to the toddler or any kind of uh, ma uh, marketly available pal next gen sir lack or anything will be given to this particular stage like toddler preschooler or primary so why they are uh, giving this kind of uh, sir lack or uh, or any kind of mix means because it, it have the needed energy in the form of a, a, a nutrient rich food and that will supplement the energy need of the toddler then it become an adolescent and adult that where they need a special food they they will eat a normal food as we are having it. so in all the life cycle uh, the food is playing a major role it is also uh, uh, needed as per the uh, uh, development of the mouth part as well as the digestive tract so in each stage there is a special need of a special food so this is the same case which is applicable to all kind of aquatic organism whether it may be a seaweed or a, uh, a seaweed it won't take any food but the, uh, they have a kind of a life cycle form uh, actually uh, even it may be a shrimp or it may be a, a lobster or it may be a crab or a, a cephalopod or a bivalve or a fish they all have a such a stage called a, an adult stage which will become a brood stock this brood stock uh, they undergone a uh, natural uh, uh, based spawning or induced spawning depends upon the environment where they are uh, during the spawning period they will release the egg and the trillion the egg fertilized and the development happens and the development will uh, lead to a fry or larvae if it is a fish we used to call it as a fry if it is uh, uh, a shrimp we used to call it as a larvae this fry will develop as a fingerling whereas the larvae become a coarse larvae and uh, uh, this fingerling or coarse larvae again uh, they develop as a juvenile and the juvenile become an adult and this life cycle will uh, uh, go as on okay but uh, this particular stage uh, particularly the fry to fingerling stage as i said in the early stage this animal the fry or a fingerling or a larvae or coarse larvae they don't have a big mouth part or a developed well developed uh, uh, mouth part or any kind of digestive system so in that particular stage alone it need a special food where the artemia comes in so to say this one i am telling because the, all these stage there is there is no need of our artemia but here the feed is uh, uh, very much a, a important life feed is artemia so before uh, talking about the life feed aquaculture i just want to tell what is uh, uh, what is the classification of we all know aquaculture is uh, nothing but uh, uh, raising an animal uh, in a, uh, a confined environment uh, like a pond or cage or anything uh, in that aquaculture there are two kind of technology one is hatchery technology and one another is grow technology when in the grow the hatchery technology uh, these are the phases like uh, fruit stock management, induced or natural based spawning, and uh, the development of uh, fertilized egg and the fertilized egg to fry or larvae. Uh, up to this stage, the hatchery people they will make it the animal. But when the uh, fertilized egg, when it is uh, uh, developed to a fry or larvae, uh, some of the animals they are very specific in taking the very specified food. It may be a plankton. Uh, this plankton are very microscopic in nature and uh, if the fry or a larvae uh, again it will transfer to a grow technology where the grow technology they have a, a fingerling or post larvae that post larvae will be developed to a juvenile and adult in this stage they will harvest the animal and they will sell it to the market this is the uh, phases of the aquaculture technology so, uh, I, I, as I said, uh, the particular uh, uh, phases from fry to fingerling and larvae to post larvae, the animal, uh, for example, a fish or a shrimp, they need a specific food. That food is called as live feed, and there is a separate, a separate chapter is there, and live feed aquaculture, uh, which is nothing but the dealing of the phytoplankton culture as well as the zooplankton culture in a confined uh, environment. It may be a lab or any kind of a 
higher uh, uh, open uh, aquaculture unit. So when we are talking about aquaculture, these are all some of the examples. For phytoplankton, uh, we can uh, say uh, chlorella, ketocerus, isocrisis, as well as spirulina. Uh, this uh, uh, chlorella, particularly, uh, they uh, actually when we are talking about chlorella, the chlorella is having a size of uh, 2 to 10 micro, uh, uh, micrometer, whereas the ketocerus is uh, around 2 to 85 micrometer. Whereas uh, the isocrisis, which is uh, very much used in, uh, for the bivalve aquaculture, uh, so uh, it is around 3 to 7.5 micrometer, and the spirulina is around 300 to 500 micrometer. When we are talking about Artemia, most of this uh, Vesuplanta, uh, the, these are all the examples like Artemia, Rotifer, Protipod, and Mosquito larvae. Even Mosquito larvae is uh, good for, a, 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 for any kind of larvae or a uh, finger link or post larvae. So the size may uh, not less than 500 micrometer. So today we are going to uh, talk elaborately about this Artemia. So before telling about the Artemia life cycle, I just want to tell uh, the life cycle of a Pineus monodon. Uh, this picture shows how a Pineus monodon uh, hatchery as well as grow technology will work on it. Uh, this particular uh, Pineus, uh, uh, this Pineus will be taken to uh, the wild Pineus will be take, uh, collected from the collected as a brood, and they were taken to the hatchery unit. Where in hatchery unit, they will uh, kept in the maturation tank, they will provide a high content of lipid diet and they will do an induced spawning practice through eye stock ablation. Eye stock ablation is a separate science uh, where they will, uh, they will just check at one eye to uh, make the inducement. So they, this, this will make the brood to spawn and they release the gametes and the fertilization will take uh, externally. Once the uh, fertilized egg uh, is reached, the, uh, uh, the fertilized egg will be developed to a Naplie within 18 hours. And uh, uh, within uh, the post Naplie to on the second day, on the fourth day, it becomes a Zoya. On the uh, uh, fifth, to, uh, fifth day, it has become a Zoya. And the tenth day, become, it is become a Myces. On the fifteenth day, it becomes a post larvae. On the PL6 or some uh, at that stage, they will take to the grow pond and they started culturing this in the grow pond. And once it reaches uh, 20 to 30 gram size, they used to harvest it. Particularly, this uh, stages, as I said, Naplie, the post Naplie, Zoia, Mysis, and those larvae. The, uh, the, 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 the feeding particle should be uh, much this much size only. For example, in Zoia 1, the needed feed uh, particle size is 160 micrometer. Whereas uh, Zoya 2, it is uh, uh, it is also 160, whereas Zoya 3, it is 200. For M1, that is Mysis 1, it is around 300, and the M2, it is M2 and M3, it is around 400. For PL, it should be around 500 micrometer. So when we are talking about the classification of Artemia, it belongs to the uh, kingdom Animalia and belongs to the vertebrate uh, thing. Actually, we all know the classification of the thing. In invertebrate, there is a phylum called Arthropoda. In Arthropoda, there is a, a separate division called uh, Crustacea, where all these animals are being uh, placed. Particularly, the brain shrimp, the, what we are talking Artemia, it belongs to the Brachiopoda group. Uh, all these uh, shrimps, prawn, crustacea, all belong to the Malacus shrimp. Okay. Uh, this is the uh, scientific classification of Artemia where it falls, is, it is under the crustacean group, particularly it is highly uh, related to the shrimp family. So, uh, as I said, it belongs to the kingdom Animalia and the phylum Arthropoda, subphylum crustacea, and class Brachiopoda, and the order uh, Anacostrepha, and the family Artemidae, and the genus Artemia. Depends upon the uh, different uh, kind of distribution, Artemia uh, uh, can be uh, the, spe or the species of Artemia will be known as Artemia franciscana, Artemia monica. Artemia prismalis, Artemia salina, Artemia sinica, and the Tibetiana and Urmania. Some of the uh, parthenogenetic population they used to call as 
artemia parthenogenetica so this picture shows a, a, a population of the artemia the male and female they are the interesting and the female which is having the this picture shows the brood star uh, the brood pouch which is carrying all the eggs whereas the male which is having the uh, tract region to catch the female and this is the cyst uh, here and is the uh, hydrated uh, spherical schist. Uh, you can see the trunk region here with the nail and the boost of here. And this is the naplay, which is uh, rich with all kind of food in the uh, in it. And this is another uh, 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 adult, uh, I think, particularly with the boost of artemia, which is here in the population. So, like shrimp, artemia is also having a life cycle of uh, a different kind of life cycle. Uh, the, I said the female, which is having the food stock, they will directly release the cyst or uh, with the proper sexual reproduction, they may release the uh, yeah, fertilized egg. And this egg become an eight, eight cell staged and it is developed to a uh, blastula and then it becomes a gastrula. Then it will become a, a late gastrula. Then, uh, some subsequently it become a early noplie as well as noplie, metanoplie, early instar. Then they become the later instar and they develop to an adult. Okay, so the entire process, uh, this process, particularly from egg to uh, the early naplia stage within 24 hours this will uh, happen so if we are having a cyst in our home within 24 hours we can get the naplia so the development is very uh, with, with uh, take within a short span so if we need to feed the artemia uh, uh, naplia to an animal we can if we are having the egg on the previous day within uh, 24 hours we can get the naplia and we can feed the animal so that is the easiest process here that I want to highlight here. Within 20 to 24 hours, a uh, cyst can develop to a naplia. So after 24 hours, in the 36 hours, it becomes uh, almost a metanoplia. There also, it is very rich in uh, lipid as well as uh, enriched nutrition will be available in this. So then they developed uh, into a instar and they will develop as adult. So, but all the stages are preferable to all kind of aquatic organisms like shrimps as well as uh, by the fishes. So most of the hatchery, shrimp hatchery and uh, fish hatchery to develop their uh, young ones, uh, they almost depends upon the artemia cyst. So they uh, took the artemia cyst and they ate it and they became uh, they, they encapsulate and they will get the naplay and this naplay which is around 300 to micro uh, 400 micrometer in size and 2 micrograms there which is very much nutritionally rich that will be uh, given to the uh, hatchery uh, reared uh, shrimp for a larval uh, shrimp for a pinfish larvae are prime. So this uh, particular uh, work has uh, done in our center for ocean research and uh, this uh, cyst and uh, within the cyst, uh, the, uh, you can see the uh, gastrula stage here and within 24 hours, the, from the cyst, the naplia is coming out. This particular stage we, are used, we used to call it as an umbrella stage. Then the uh, within 24 hours, the complete hatching will happen almost the uh, over foot of the cyst this year and they, uh, 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 the segments are developing and within 30 years they become a monopoly. Within two days, uh, two days it becomes the second instar and three days third instar. On the, uh, on the fourth day it becomes the sixth instar. On the fifth day it becomes the eighth instar. On uh, sixth day it becomes the eleventh instar and the eye fly formation are developed on seventh day, it, it is the 15th instar. On 14th day, it becomes an adult. So it's a male, and this is the female here. So again, it, it may undergo uh, sexual or asexual reproduction, and depends upon the uh, environmental condition, uh, this is formation will happen. And this is the cyst uh, picture of a cyst. Uh, 
with the scale of atom microphone, you can see how the SIS look like. People used to call us wind ray. Uh, so when we hydrate the cyst in a water, uh, they will uh, develop their, uh, uh, they hydrate it and they will develop as a nauplia. Uh, before I, uh, uh, explaining this particular slide, I want to play a video here. See a person, this person is uh, using this uh, Coca-Cola bottle, a Pepsi bottle as a uh, cylindrical cone and uh, he is uh, adding salt in the water. Uh, almost he is using one, to one third of the tablespoon uh, per liter, almost it is 33 grams and a pinch of baking soda. So 33% gram of salt per liter means almost the salinity will reach to 33 percentage. Even if we, we can put 35 grams of uh, salt uh, in the water. Now he is add, uh, adding cyst in that. Almost uh, two gram of cyst he is adding uh, in water. And he is making up to one liter. And he is also having a aerator uh, 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 tube which is connected with the air zone and uh, he is providing a light. Uh, light is also needed. So he is aerating for 24 hours. So with the uh, vigorous aer aeration and continuous uh, light exposure, the cyst all become an RPA and the fertilization is completed here. This artemia are uh, very uh, lovable to light, they will attract it by the light. See the entire Napoli, it is fertilized out, and you can see the Napoli are freely swimming in the water. And uh, cyst uh, caps, which is hatched out, and the debris are uh, on the top. So, with the help of a uh, light source, we can separate this uh, Napoli, hatched out Napoli, fertilized. Once the fertilization is completed, we can filter that. This person, he is doing in his home itself. Just filtering that top uh, layer with the muslin cloth. So you can see the fertilized Napoli here. And uh, this video shows how these Artemia are attracted by the light. You can see uh, they all attracted by the light source. They will uh, aggregate in this region so that we can siphon it out to to do a, a lab based experiment if we are doing that in the lab. As I said, that uh, NAPLI will be used as a, uh, a lethality test model. So, for that purpose and all, to fix the LD50 concentration and all, we can use a light source and we can uh, uh, aggregate this NAPLI in that path, light path, and we can harvest this NAPLI. This is hatching bright ship, actually how this is become a Napoli. So uh, when the Napoli, uh, the cyst is added in the sea water, they will have become, uh, within 20 minutes, it become hydrated and they look like a spherical thing. After incubation uh, in 28 degrees Celsius, I say the upper last year, the Napoli are coming out, slowly they are coming out. This is the upper last uh, stage of the thing. So uh, some of the napoli they came out and started uh, moving here and there. 
and now you can see the i spot development one i red spot and when the antennas are doing they started uh, swimming freely and uh, this is the unhatched cyst and this is the uh, other nuclei they are attracted to light as i said we can easily uh, separate the nuclei so let us see uh, the metanuclei's the trunk is getting developed artemia used to feed and other debris in the water so even it is a good for a baby sea sea horse see the how sea horse is eating this nuclei so any kind of uh, aquatic organism if you want to raise aquatic organism in a lab you can use artemia nuclei as a feed uh, because it is uh, we can uh, make this uh, fertilized cis fertilization easily in the lab and we can get the nuclei because this nuclei is very much enriched with uh, dha so that will be very useful for the animals so now coming to the slide uh, the particularly this particular slide which is having a1 and a2 which is the ancestor late gastrula stage so they uh, uh, the cyst is hydrated and they are started swelling Uh, on the b thing they almost swell and uh, the cyst wall gets splits out uh, here you can see the umbrella stage actually after splitting out the nuclei are coming out uh, this, this is called as umbrella stage and even some of the membrane is bounding bound uh, uh, to this uh, nuclei uh, once this uh, development happen they become the free swimming and this is the nuclei stage other 24 hours we will get the fertilized uh, nuclei like this fertilized egg become an nuclei so we even uh, you can uh, easily pipette it out uh, even the pipette tip can be easily uh, pick uh, artemia nuclei as i said it is very smaller in size see a larvae which is uh, very small in size having a small mouth part but this mouth part can be able to eat this animal because it, even the nuclei is very smaller as i said it is around 400 micrometer and uh, very two uh, microgram only in size so the uh, in uh, specific larvae they are uh, very much attracted by this nuclei uh, artemia nuclei as they used to eat this so uh, uh, the advantage of artemia uh, is Uh, uh they are in different size because artemia in all different size even if an apple or in a insta or other on all the stage we can feed this to uh, any kind of aquaculture uh, hatchery or any kind of uh, aquarium shops okay they are visible to prey and are highly palatable to the larvae uh, they are visible as a prey means uh, even the host can easily see the this animal uh, and they can uh, hunt and they can prey this and they are highly palatable because all the animals they are fond of eating this particular artemia nuclei uh, that special needs can be given to improve its nutritional uh, value uh, as i said uh, the special needs means uh, even we can enrich the artemia with uh, any kind of dha or if you want to enrich with any kind of algal extract we can do that or even we can enrich the artemia with any kind of probiotic bacteria that at all can be possible that i will explain in the later as well the carapace are digestive uh, are digested easily with the digestive secretion though artemia are like look like a shrimp and they have a carapace but these carapaces are not heavy like shrimps it can be easily digested by the digestive secretion of any kind of aquatic organism the disadvantage is this uh, uh, we cannot easily separate the shell uh, the cyst cell from uh, if it is not properly getting fertilized so if we uh, provide the unfertilized or uh, not uh, this uh, like a cyst where with the uh, outer cover if it is not removed properly if we are giving to the uh, any kind of uh, Uh, post larvae are fry it is uh, uh, they it is unhealthy and not they consume their yolk in a short period as i said 
the uh, development stage uh, is within 24 hours. Once they become an OPLI, they we have to feed this OPLI to the uh, uh, archery unit. Otherwise, if we allow the OPLI to grow, grow for uh, more than 24 hours, if within the 48 hours, the yolk material is completely absorbed by the uh, artemia itself for its growth. So this picture shows how uh, cyst will be available in the market, and this is the cyst, and almost uh, uh, a 500 gram of cyst. Uh, uh, it may vary from thousand to three thousand, or even it may sometimes uh, it may cost six thousand. Depends upon the seasonal demand and availability. The advantage of cyst is artemia cyst can be used and stored for uh, uh, for many years. Even keep this artemia for many years. After uh, 20 or uh, 25 years also, if you take the cyst and you just hydrate it with the seawater, within 24 hours, you will get the uh, complete fertilization and you will get the naplia that naplia can be used. So that, that, that is the main advantage of this Artemia cyst. So we can uh, uh, purchase the cyst and we can keep it in the lab or in the refrigerator or even in our home and whenever we need, uh, before uh, the day of the need, we can just uh, uh, take a normal water with the 35 percentage of salt and we just put the cyst in that. And if we aerate it with the company, uh, with the vigorous aeration and with the proper light source, that will become a nopli and that can be feed to any kind of animal, even in our home or in the hatchery unit, whether it may be your institute or it may be a, a commercial hatchery place. The incubation is easy. As I, as I shown in the video, it is very easy. They can uh, tolerate wide range of temperature as well as salinity, as well as uh, even we can use a disinfection uh, to uh, clean this artemia cyst as well as not larvae. Because of the wide range of sites, it can be used for feeding different species. So whatever it may be, as I show, even I have shown an example of a seahorse, which is eating this larvae. So we can give it to any kind of uh, uh, species, which is commercially uh, uh, important. Okay. The disadvantage in, uh, disadvantages are, even if Artemia is still remain an expensive product. So even though we have a cyst uh, all around the world, but it is very expensive product it depends upon the market demand as well as the seasonal availability. The market availability shows fluctuation, as I said. Huh? So that if in the season we cannot get even an Artemia cyst for even normal for our research purpose. The source of Artemia cyst are the threatened day by day. Yes, because of this uh, climate change or uh, some other thing, uh, the uh, even uh, getting a cyst has become a problem because of the adverse global changes. And one, one more disadvantage of the cyst means uh, the cyst is uh, maybe the carrier for any kind of pathogenic form of bacteria. If it is not properly fertilized and given to any kind of animal, uh, the animal may have the uh, chance to get the uh, uh, pathogen infection. And I already said that uh, Artemia is worldwide distributed and uh, depends upon the region, they used to call it in a different uh, name. In Mediterranean, they used to call it Salina, and uh, even in Tunisia, they used to call us uh, Artemia Salina. In Tunisia region, they used to call us Tunisiana. Whereas in Europe, Africa, and Asia, uh, as well as uh, in Australia, they used to call us Parthenogenetica. In Iran, they used to call us Urmaniana. And the East Asia, they uh, used to call us Sinica, whereas in Argentina, they used to call us Similis. In Pacific Island, as well as in Caribbean and as well as in America, they used to call us uh, Franciscana. And uh, uh, even in some part of the California, they used to call us Monica. And in Kazakhstan, uh, they simply used to call us Artemia species. And I, as I said, the adult Artemia, it will be 10 to 15 millimeter in length. Uh, uh, the, this is the male, which is having the posterior part of a trunk region to hold the female during the reproductive process and the female is having a broader pouch or the uterus. The egg developed in two tubular ovaries in the abdomen. Once a uh, ripening happens, they become a spherical and migrate via two ovidect into the 
and pair uterus and they will be uh, stored in this sac in the proper uh, uh, condition it will shed the eggs and the ecology as i said they are uri thermal and uri thalamic they can tolerate a wide range of salinity uh, from 1 ppt to 50 ppt uh, and the optimal salinity needed is 30 to 35 ppt that is for fertilization it should be 30 to 35 ppt and even they did, can tolerate from 6 to 35 degrees Celsius, but uh, for a fertilization purpose, the opt optimal temperature is needed as 20 to 30 degrees Celsius for a proper incubation of cyst. So here, this picture shows uh, how they are harvesting the artemia in the uh, Great Salt Lake. And you can see how much cyst is there. And uh, this cyst is properly Post uh, in the proper post harvest technology, it will pack to a so, can. And I said uh, Artemia is having a uh, sexual and asexual reproduction. And this asexual reproduction, uh, then in, in, uh, with an adverse extreme condition, they release the cyst. And the cyst only we are uh, used to develop as an artery. And Artemia can feed anything in the water, it may be a bacteria, algae, or any hydra, whatever uh, or biological object, which is less than 50 micrometer. And I said, uh, anybody can do this Artemia uh, hatching, even in the lab or in uh, or anywhere they can do this work. The only need is a 25 degrees Celsius uh, of uh, temperature, which that is a normal room temperature. And we need a 30 to 35 percentage of salinity of a water, salt water, a normal uh, uh, salt, cooking salt can be taken. And uh, with the 35 gram in the normal water, it becomes a 35 ppt of a salt water that can be used for the fertilization. Then we need a light source, which should be 200 lux uh, uh, intensity. And the oxygen level should be 2 to 4 micro uh, gram per liter. And the pH should be 8 to 9. And we need a strong aeration as well as a cylindrical shaped tank. So, uh, this I have shown in the video also. And this is what's needed. There is a cylindrical tank is needed, and the vigorous aeration should be needed, and the light source is needed to have the artemia fertilized nappy. Uh, even uh, for the decapsulation, we are using hypo, uh, sodium hypochlorite. Uh, Sometimes they are using calcium as well as potassium hypochlorite also to decapsulation. So, as I said, the other factors which is uh, affecting the hatching is ionic composition, uh, as I said, temperature, salinity, pH, oxygen, as well as uh, uh, light intensity and water quality will have a major role in the hatching uh, because some of the people they used to face this. Uh, low rate of hatching in the lab that is because of any of these factors which is playing the major role and this is a, a cone a artemia cysting cone which is in the hatchery they are adding this adding the cyst and they are uh, hydrating that after that it, be, it can be harvested uh, to this size harvested and they, they can take the nappy like this even we can uh, do this uh, uh, enrichment uh, or with the DHA we can enrich with that. After enrichment, we can collect it with the net with the proper washing. Uh, this uh, uh, collected nauplia as a soup can be taken in a different uh, volume of glasses or any uh, beakers. And this will be uh, taken to each part of the hatchery uh, tank. And this is the completely harvested uh, nappy in the hatchery unit. So what we are what we done in our uh, Center for Ocean Resources, we have a uh, Colonel Dr. JPS salt pan uh, nearby our uh, campus. Uh, we have a, uh, we are doing salt production in, in this particular salt pan. And we, uh, we want to do Artemia as an integrated farming practice. So in the evaporation pond, we have uh, take, uh, we made a, the pond is initially prepared, and we just made one uh, pit nearby the uh, pond. 
So uh, uh, sea water around 20 to 25 ppt will be uh, uh, used to uh, fill this evaporation pond because the uh, evaporation pond will be just uh, one or two feet uh, depth only. Uh, we dig a, uh, just a pit nearby this one. So in this evaporation pond, we just add a, a freshly ha hatched napli uh, as a inaclum. As uh, we, this uh, freshly hatched napli, we made it in our lab in central ocean system. This used as a inaclum, and we have introduced this in the pond. So uh, some of our scientists, uh, they are uh, inaculating this artemia napli in the sides of the evaporation pond of the salt pan. So, Artemia and Apne growing and reproducing in the evaporation pond of Solfan. As within days, uh, you can see uh, in the big, uh, the particular uh, pit, the day pit, we can see uh, a large number of uh, adult Artemia population. Here, here, you can see the uh, orange color spots. These are all the adult Artemia, are visible to an evaporation pond within 20 days. So now this is part of our technology business incubator program. So even the, those officials from the technology business incubator from the DSG, NSGD, they used to visit this and they check what is the possibility of doing this integrated uh, artemia farming in the salt pans. So once it has become a wild adult, I mean uh, 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 a grown-up adult, uh, this will be easily harvested with the help of the hand net. Uh, our uh, scientists, they are picking up using the hand net and they are collecting it in the polythene bags. Uh, you Even you can see the bucket, it is full of adult artemia. This adult artemia, how it will look uh, just for, uh, we are taken in the petrol plates, you can see the reddish color and they are grown up very well. So what we are doing here is uh, this adult artemia, uh, we have kind of harvested this biomass will be packed in a plastic cover uh, with a 500 gram of size and we used to uh, freeze it uh, in, uh, uh, in minus 20 or minus 80 degrees Celsius. This particular uh, 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 freezed uh, live artemia, it is in a high demand in an aquarium uh, market. Uh, uh, we can sell that to 500 to 600 grams. Even we can go for uh, some more uh, minus 80 degrees Celsius also, uh, we are uh, freezing it, or we can go for a liabilization and they can, we can make it as a cake like this, or we can mash it and with any kind of a needed thing and we can make a flake form. All this can be, uh, uh, all or these forms are very uh, in a high demand in an aquarium market and we can sell this. As I said, artemia is uh, in whatever form, if you are giving the artemia, the, any kind of aquatic organism, they are uh, high, allowed to eat this artemia. And I already said that we can enrich the artemia with the essential nutrients, pigments, for, or any prophylactics or therapeutics. This can be taken by the artemia through uh, feeding mechanism and the entire artemia uh, gut will be uh, uh, full with this particular uh, needed essential nutrients or pigments or anything that. Then this, after enriching with this uh, needed uh, compound, this can be given to the uh, host. This host will eat this artemia and the compound is also uh, transferred to the host so that we can uh, do the, uh, use the artemia as a vector to uh, provide the uh, needed uh, uh, compound. So uh, it may be a fish or a crustacean. Through Artemia, we can supply the uh, needed compound. It may be a drug or any kind of uh, essential nutrients. So these are all the some of the work which is done in different uh, uh, countries and uh, some of the papers, uh, some selected four papers I am just going to give here for your reference. And this particular work is done in Indonesia. What they have done means they just want to know whether this Artemia uh, uh, nutritional quality can be enriched when they are feeding the Artemia with the, uh, particularly with the, uh, Ketosaurus as well as with Skeletoniba. 
uh, they uh, the, the, the particularly these scientists they have harvested the uh, not layer from uh, from the wild area and they develop uh, they plan to develop this not artemia not layer to adult in their lab by feeding that not layer with the petiosaurus skeletonema and mixed up petiosaurus and skeletonema but uh, when they check the fatty acid as well as amino acid composition they thought uh, they did the experiment with the imported as well as the locally available artemia and they found that when they are uh, enriching the naplie with the ketoceras the uh, essential amino acid as well as amino essential fatty acid ratio is enriching that is the result of this their work and this work was uh, done in brazil uh, this particular team they what they did means they enriched the artemia naplie with the probiotic prebiotic as well as symbiotic supplements <coughs> the probiotic is nothing but they have used bacillus subtilis as the probiotic substance whereas as a prebiotic they use insulin in symbiotic they used bacillus as well as insulin uh, and overall all the substances uh, will be given in 1.16 gram per liter to the artemia naplie and after enriching with this uh, naplie Uh, uh they give this artemia an enriched naplie and uh, uh, naplie without enrichment that is used as a control to the catfish in their area actually pseudoplatyostoma reticulum reticulum is the catfish variety which is very commercially important in brazilian region uh they found the particularly when the probiotics uh, is uh, provided as a enrichment uh, in the artemia uh, the weight uh, the uh, weight of the catfish is increasing as well as the length of the catfish is increasing so they thought uh, 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 enrichment with probiotic of uh, artemia and given to uh, this uh, larval catfish of a brazilian form that will uh, uh, benefit to the all kind of aquaculture community this work is uh, done in uh, particularly in bardiar university in tamil nadu what they did is uh, they worked in uh, Uh, macrobarkin rosenberg which is the fresh water uh, prawn okay actually what they plan to do is they want to enrich the artemia naplie with the lactobacillus which is nothing but a probiotic bacteria and they want to modify the gut content of the uh, post larvae of the macrobarkin rosenberg because the gut content bacteria that will play the major role in the physiology and the growth and development of any animal here it will work a work with the uh, uh, macrobarkin rosenberg post larvae so when they did the enrichment experiment they found the, uh, there is a good growth in the post larvae as well as uh, there is a healthiness in the uh, 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 that freshwater prawn and the proximate composition shows that there is a good fold up increase in the protein carbohydrate lipid as well as amino acid content then they are providing the enrichment with lactobacillus and this final work which is done in our lab what we did is uh, we just want to know whether the artemia growth rate is increasing when the naplie are fed with the uh, spirulina based uh, liposomal uh, uh, units okay we create, uh, we made a liposome which is the liposome was uh, i uh, encapsulated with the spirulina extract because we all know spirulina have all kind of essential and uh, needed nutrients uh, nutri nutrients the spirulina uh, made as a juice and this will be encapsulated in a high lipid uh, content diet and we made as a liposome you can see the liposome which is uh, uh, the picture was taken in the microscope and we you can see after enrichment you can see the entire uh, Let us fill with the spinula and rich liposomes. So when we done the proximate composition, the total carbohydrate is uh, very high in the liposome and rich for dartemia, so, as well as uh, even the protein source is also very high. So this kind of enrichment, if they give, if we provide this to an uh, aquaculturist animal, so this uh, protein as well as higher lipid source will be at. Uh, added advantage and that will be given a synergistic uh, nutritional value to the fish 
so even the length of the artemia is also uh, higher when we are uh, uh, providing the liposome fed uh, liposome enrichment in this artemia nodule so this kind of experiment you can also try in your lab and you can refer this paper also thank you thanks a lot for patiently listening this topic thank you sir thank you for the wonderful presentation participants you can post your queries in the chat box or use the raise hand option to interact with the speaker okay thank you everyone for patiently listening this topic actually i just want to give the tomorrow's announcement actually <coughs> tomorrow by uh, by 4:30 there are uh, two uh, presentations uh, one is by one minute this uh the the title is about innovation ipr and bio entrepreneurship by mr uh, kishor kumar who is our uh, tba manager uh, even you can uh, know uh, more about if you anybody any of you having an idea of going for a startup or any idea of business plan you can have a more interaction with our manager so he will help you because our technology business incubator is uh, uh, which is having a uh basic uh, sorry the important thematic area of uh, marine based entrepreneurship also so uh, kindly uh, listen to this talk and interact with kishore kumar to know what are all the opportunities in entrepreneurship particularly in biotechnological area the second talk is again given by me uh, it is about the ocean acidification and fish gut microbiome what is the impact of fish gut microbiome because of this ocean acidification effect so we all meet you tomorrow by 4:30 thank you thanks everyone sir one question sir yeah please sir uh, th this is dr mahakan and gopal from my yeah, man yeah please sir please sir. Uh, sir sir actually do we have any cis production nursery in our uh, in tamil nadu and uh, uh, the, i hear that our artemias a little bigger than the uh, artemis species which we are buying from the overseas is that yeah. true sir That's yes, sir. Actually, to be frank, uh, the uh, the local available Artemia species they used to call us Artemia calamba cancers. Actually, okay. uh, this is uh, provided by I think uh, Madras University people. Particularly, uh, they worked and they have uh, specified this particular species. They are really having a, 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 a this is just somewhat bigger in size. Even the napi mm. is also bigger in size. but the thing is there is no separate uh, unit for uh, creating this cyst uh, because this particular cyst uh, depends upon the extreme environment only the female will release the uh, egg as a cyst so in an extreme condition if there is uh, not a, 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 a improper weather or a, any kind of improper condition only this particular uh, female they will release this cyst and it, it uh, more or less this is can be only harvested in the wild population even in our kelambakam salt pack uh, salt pan and all in a, in, a, yeah, in a nice windy season if you are walking along the salt pan you can collect some of the amount of cyst even ourselves we can collect the cyst okay sir so but it's not at the commercial uh, level right sir in tutukudi uh, uh, salt pan uh, people they are collecting the cyst and they are providing uh, uh, commercially uh, uh, all uh, salt pan people those who are doing salt production they are doing it a side business they are selling the cyst they are selling the adult artemia what i have shown here they are refrigerating the adult artemia and they are providing as well as they are also uh, commercially providing the cyst to uh, uh, aquaculture people so oh, thank you thank you very much sir it's new to me and uh, thank you so much for the detailed presentation thank i uh, really appreciate that with uh, artemia uh, uh, you you have given excellent information sir thank, thank you sir. very much thank you yeah, it's detail very detail thank you very much thank and appreciate it thank you thank you sir right. if uh, th if there is no question we can end the session here thank you thanks everyone we can be meet you on uh, tomorrow by 4:30 pm okay thank you anu we can stop the recording here